Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Strong Sabbath Insight. I am Chief Yuya, Chief Jagna of the Anu Nation, and also the uh, Chief of the Anu Life Global Ministries. Of course, you're tuned into our Sabbath Insight, which we do every seven days. And I want to welcome um, anyone who's coming in for the first time, as well as those who have been here and partnering and supporting, you know, over the course. All right. So I want to get into a subject today that's really going to be a, a sort of a pre precursor to a little bit more um, as we're still sort of t uh, trailing off on the discussions around the mind of, of Anu or the Anu mind and some of the things that maybe um, help to expand and cultivate that way of thinking and some of the things that may limit it. All right. So I want to speak about discernment. All right. And I know that's a word that especially if um, maybe you're someone who like grew up in a church, you know, you probably heard that word a lot. Discernment, spiritual discernment, the gift of discernment, things like that. Um, and sometimes we limit uh, certain vocabulary, certain ideas or concepts to one environment, um, which sometimes is a part of a game. You know, uh, if something can be associated with a certain paradigm and then that paradigm is um, looked down upon, you know, or you're sort of tricked out of it, then you'll stay away from those concepts. Uh, discernment is, I think, more critical today than it's been for many of us in a very long time because we're so bombarded by so many lies, so many uh, angels of light, if you will. And remember, an angel is a messenger. And we have plenty of messengers of light who come into our journey. And we have so many that come into our phones and into our tablets and into our laptops and, you know, um, just into our, our along our path, you know, that it becomes very difficult to understand who's sending that light. And, you know, it's 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 many other sort of uh, entities and forces that can disguise themselves as uh, angels of true light or real light or messengers of true light and real light, but can actually lead you down a path of uh, harm and a path of de-evolution, taking you away from your divine ascension, you know? So I wanted to speak upon that because like I said, um, in the coming strongs, I wanted to start getting a, a bit more into the, the spiritual anth anthropology of uh, sort of the journey of the divine light across the globe and across the universe and how it may have represented itself in different forms. You know, uh, we use certain titles. We were having a study the other night uh, in Anu and we were using different titles. We were, we were with a good friend of mine who's a Christian minister and um, someone was using the term Hebrew. And I was like, you know, at the end of the day, I. I don't really identify with any of these things. I use these terms when I'm speaking to to people who are living a human experience because it helps them to understand maybe the perspective a bit more. But ultimately, the creator and cosmic forces have never spoken to me through any group identification. They've always just spoken to me, you know, so, uh, you know, or me as a, a divine spark living a human existence. These are the only really identity groups that I've ever been referred to as, you know, um, from the originator. But we use certain terms just to, you know, make it easier for people to understand us, you know. But sometimes um, different people of different identity groups may come at you with certain, a lot of different information. We get information overload. And then as a result, there's a lot of internal chatter. And that internal chatter is your first... Um, is your first, I would say, poison, you know, or, or, or hindrance or retarded to your ability to discern, you know, is the internal chatter. And one of the things that we have to do immediately when we want to really exercise that ability, and I, we could say that gift, is we have to remove a lot of the external stimulation and chatter that keeps us, that keeps us from having that sensitivity. Because what happens is ultimately it numbs us. You know, and a lot of us lose our ability to discern because of our numbness. I've done segments before on how to spot a, spot a scammer, how to spot a fraud, different things like that. I even did a series 
at one point on that because it's it's really important because again like i said there's so many coming at us today trying to trick us out of our position you know and um when you speak about the sermon it's important to understand the difference between someone who has true spiritual discernment from the creator and someone who is discerning from lower order artificial spirits okay they're not the same thing a lot of times you'll have people who often will come to you with a, a word and, and they're usually pretty ambiguous you know um sometimes you know like you got to mix a little truth with a lie so sometimes they may hit a point and you'll say man it, it must have been real because i never told anyone that so the only way they could have said that or that you know a spirit must have told them you know not realizing number one some people wear their history on their sleeve and don't even realize it. Some people are a lot more see-through than they realize, um, number one. Number two, some of the, the human stories are, are common. There's certain things that you can look at immediately and you sort of know. If, if I see, I'll just give you an example, and this is not to make it, I'm, I'm making a generalization. So I'm, I don't want you to think that I'm saying this is exact science. Uh, if I see a young attractive female and um especially if she's shapely she's shapely she's attractive she's a bit standoffish and she has tattoos all over her there are already certain things that i know i know what happened to her i'm just gonna say that i'll just say that i know what happened to her if she's a um let's say if she's a bit overweight but she's wearing clothes that don't necessarily complement or support her figure. She's wearing clothes that maybe her, her stomach is hanging out at the bottom or, you know, her, her behind doesn't look particularly flattering. She's got nipple rings and you can see them through the shirt and it just looks a little sloppy. I know what happened to her, right? I know what happened. So now she came to me for divination. I could immediately start speaking about experiences that cause us to lose uh, respect and honor for our, our body as a sense of someone we, we feeling violated because someone maybe made us feel like we didn't own our, our body anymore. Um, I could immediately start speaking about trauma and the things that we do to cope as a result of trauma. I may even look at how she uses her hands when she gesticulates. You know, the same way people probably notice because I've been spoken to, I, I use my hands a lot when I speak. That's a coping mechanism. You know, um, yes, I, I, I am involved in certain arts that are um, very manual, you know, like my martial arts or um, my music where I use my hands a lot and things like that. But it's also a coping mechanism. I know enough about psychology to know that. Right. So, I mean, look at how she gesticulates. I may look at her body posture, I'm looking at the tattoos, I'm looking at how she's dressed, and I can start saying things that I immediately know are 100% spot on. I already know, right? Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I've done some amazing great divination. It just means that I have a, a, a some sort of cursory understanding of psychology, uh, human history, social conditions, and the typical social and psychological reaction to trauma you know, in this day and time, because it, it changes as, as we go, right? Um, so when you're, you're really looking to sort of get into a space where you remove yourself from people who are really trying to trick you, they're really trying to pull you, you know, they're, they're trying to pull you into a direction that takes you into, takes you into, into your worst circumstances. And they may use a little truth to, to do that. And they'll sprinkle a little truth at you. A lot of times, it's like I said, it can be very ambiguous. You know, that's the person who's always having the dreams, texting you and calling you. I had a dream about you last night. Nine times out of ten, when I get those texts, I don't even respond. So, <laughs> I had you, you know, because I, I know what most of the time that is. Depending on who it's coming from. Depending on who it's coming from, I say, hey, well, what was the dream? And then for most others, I, you won't even get a response, right? But that's the person's always texting you, calling you with a dream. What was it? Well, what was the dream? We were walking down the street and I felt like I needed to protect you. For some reason, I needed to protect you. And then like 
this lion came and I turned into an eagle and like I grabbed you and just lifted you into the air and then I woke up. Okay. What does that mean? I don't know. That's why I called you. Right. Nonsense. <laughs> it's foolishness. Now, I know you may hear me say that and be like, well, no, that could mean something because, you know, the lion represents this and it could be the authorities are coming at you because lions represent authority, the authority coming at you. And then the ego, you know, oftentimes represents freedom and flight and vision. So somebody's seeing ahead that the authorities are coming for you and you need to go to them. To be right. I could turn anything into anything. I just made that up as I was speaking. I could turn anything into any, I could turn anything into a sign and wonder, right? The reality is true discernment comes from the spirit of the most high, period. That's where discernment is. Discernment is when you start thinking after the most high. The most high uh, has a certain way or a certain expression of what should be done. So, you know, it's, it's the epitome of let thy will and not my will. That's the epitome of discernment. Thy will, not my will, right? Um, individuals who oftentimes who will come with, with those sort of tricks, you know, sometimes that's a part of a spiritual attack that may be coming at you. And a lot of times what you'll find is that people who purport themselves as having some measure of discernment, um, it's not really a spirit of, or a gift of discernment. It's a gift of criticism or it's a gift of skepticism, <laughs> you know, Oftentimes after something happens, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Somebody gets into a car accident. Someone, you know, gets into some sort of trouble or or they transition. I saw that coming, you know, and you see a lot of that stuff on on social media all day, every day after an event. Everyone's got all the information. Tell me before the event. Tell me, tell me who the next celebrity is who's going to transition. And tell me why you know that they're going to transition. Not just because of their lifestyle or because of their health, but because whether you're using numerology, whether you're using astrology, whether you're using runes, whether you're, you're using, you know, uh, coconut, whether you're using cola nut, whether you're using the opuele, tell me exactly why they're going based on the divine spirit that you're communicating with. No one will do that because they can't because they're, they're, they're phonies. Right now, after someone transitions, it's very easy. Like, what's today? Today, I think, is the second, right? When it's, So let's say if someone transitions tonight, I could easily say I knew that was happening. You know why I knew that was happening? Because it's November 2nd, and November is the 11th. That's the gateway. You see, that's the 11th. That's the gateway. And today being the second, it's your second self calling you through the gateway. See, we all have two different forms. We have our physical form that exists on this reality, on this plane. Then we have a doppelganger ganger that exists on another, another dimension. And there's times when you have to face your doppelganger. But then there's other times where you may pull your doppelganger into this reality. And then there's times when your doppelganger may pull you into their reality. You see, and if their reality is the duat or the underworld, then that's your time to go. See, so today is November, it's the 11th. We went through the gateways in the two, which represents your other self, your second self pulls you to, I just made that up, right? Now, <laughs> if I didn't tell you I made it up and you didn't know the context of what we're speaking about and I just did a short like that, like just threw it up as a social media short, there'd be people who would be asheing and amen, amen into what I just said. That's how they get you foolishness. Um, when you keep yourself in a place where your spirit is really numbed out, uh, you lose the fundamental necessity of discernment. You know, and a lot of times that comes by way of what we choose to be entertained by. You know, I've said many times, a lot of things that we laugh at, we should not be laughing at. A lot of things that we entertain, we should actually be ruling over. You know, and like I said, discernment is not the spirit of skepticism where you just assume everything bad is going to happen or sarcasm or, or criticism. In fact, uh, a person who is overly critical of over other people, that's the first sign you know that they're not operating from the spirit of the, of the creator. 
that's your first sign right there because the creator doesn't operate like that. You know, you may see someone who um, maybe has a has a drug issue, you know, they're dealing with drug abuse. Maybe they have a sexual addiction. Maybe they have a social media addiction. Maybe they have a thinking addiction. Maybe they have a talking addiction. You know, I did a segment years ago on addiction and like I shared, we all have some kind of addiction, whether you want to believe it or not. And a lot of times they sneak in because we don't even know. We just think when you hear addiction, you think drugs, <laughs> you know, you think gambling, you know, uh, or, or like someone's a kleptomaniac. They can't stop stealing or, you know, they're a nymphomaniac and they just, you know, they have, they want to have sex consistently. And we don't imagine things like thinking could be an addiction. Um, sometimes your, your workout can be an addiction, right? And um, sometimes not being able to see, you know, where things are, are creeping in at, you know, or where certain spirits are getting in at, uh, we don't understand. Sometimes our skepticism and our hyper hyper uh, critical sort of expressions and critical projections towards people can be addictive within itself. And so sometimes we'll see someone who's like that, who has these different addictions and different issues, and we'll see an opportunity to criticize. We'll see an opportunity to condemn. But uh, the truth is, instead of condemning, we should be seeing an opportunity to rescue. You know, I see my brother or my sister, and I see they're engaged in some sort of um, destructive act, some sort of addictive act. My first response should be, man, I got to go rescue my sister. I have to go rescue my brother. I don't care if, if I see him, you know, with a box of a dozen donuts, you know, and I know they told me, yeah, the doctor said I got to lose 30 pounds or 40 pounds or I'm, you know, at risk for diabetes or, you know, whatever. And I'm seeing with a box of donuts. I could go over and say, hey, man, you know what you're doing with donuts, you know, the diabetes, whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. you know, or I could say, well, how do I rescue my brother? Because something is seeking to attack my brother or my sister. You know, something is, is seeking to put my brother or my sister in its bounds and under its control, you see. So now how can I rescue them as opposed to how can I condemn them? How can I come up with something funny to say? Uh, some people are highly addicted to their own feelings and they will even... Um, they'll use their feelings as a measure of prediction. You know, um, they live under their feelings. Their feelings rule them. And that's one of the, the, the number one ways that you lose your ability to discern. You know, uh, discernment comes from a calm mind, calm, controlled, spiritually saturated mind. And when you're, when you're under different levels of spiritual attack, one of the first things that has to be done is to put you into a frenzy. You know, keep you stressed out, keep you tired, you know, um, keep you sort of in a frenzy. And once you do that, it's very easy to do any sort of spiritual work that someone would want to do on you. Very easy, you know. Um, but when you're in a place where you are expressing your unique voicing and your unique character based on the sum of your experiences, physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional, and you're standing in that and you're calm in that and you're at peace in that, it's very difficult to get you. Very, very, very difficult to get you. And if anyone knows anything about, you know, for those who are not newcomers and who've known me maybe for 20, 25 years, you know that I'm very versed in the dark world or what we, we call the left-handed path. You know, so I'm not speaking as someone who's an outsider uh, when it comes to um, warlock sort of energy, you know, or wajet or witch sort of energy. Uh, when you're standing in character, it doesn't work. Point blank. Just, just to make it very simple for you. It doesn't work. Right. Um, so if I can get you to break your character, if I can get you out of character, if I can get you to a place where you're stressed and when you're tired and um, you're no longer obedient, obedient to the words and the directions of the creator, then I, I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you, right? Um, so our discernment, one, one of the principles of it is not only our ability to uh, listen to the truth, but it's our willingness to sort of um, let things go. 
sometimes you have to let go in order to listen. And that can be very difficult. You know, you have that sort of, uh, that type of music that you just love listening to. You have those sort of books that you love reading. You have those movies that you love watching or those trash TV shows or reality, whatever, um, reality shows that you just love watching and they just feed you in a certain kind of way, but they block, they block your ability to listen. They desensitize you. So when messages are coming, you don't even feel it. Or, you know, when there's an energy in the room that's a little bit off, you don't pick up on it. Or you might be around someone who is a fake discerner. You know, a good, good example of that is a lot of times you could be in an, at an experience and, um, Let's say we do a spiritual retreat together and, you know, we're driving back and and everyone, let's say it's four of us in, in the vehicle and three people are like, man, it was beautiful. It was a wonderful event, man, um, to be able to just sort of get together and we shouldn't take those moments for granted. You know, you know, all the good stuff. And it's that one person that's like, it was cool, but something fell off. I don't know. Something was just. I can't, I can't place my finger on it, but something was just not right. You know how you always got that one, <laughs> that one super spiritual person, but it's just, mm. you know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to pray on this. So I'm going to have to go meditate or I'm going to have to take this to my shrine. Like, shut up. Just go somewhere with <laughs> it. You know, and it's just like when you have that internal chatter trying to do that, you got to say, like, man, shut up, shut up. You know, um, because it's, it's, it's trying to keep you in a place of satanic onslaught thoughts. And remember, satanic thought is brain thought, human thought, beastly thought, you know, trying to keep you sort of in that space. So now you can't really ascend to a place where. Um, you're now formidable against those tricks that may come that may try to deceive you. You've lost your ability to discern, you see. And truthfully, man, there are spiritual attacks that many of us are going through like that on a daily. There are physical attacks that many of like, like that are that we're going through on a daily. And sometimes we don't recognize it, you know. Um, and then what happens is you, you eventually you lose the faith in your own thinking. You know, this is important, especially for you women. Listen up, man. For you women who aspire to be mothers, this is critical. This is critical that you develop and cultivate your ability to discern one and you trust what is discerned to act upon it. If you don't have any, if you don't know how to, how to cook very well, if you don't know how to clean very well, you know, um, if even if, you, if if your sex game is a little, eh, you know, make sure your discernment is on point because that will keep your family alive. It will keep your family alive. I'll give you a great example of that. Um, I was having a conversation not too long ago um, with a with a, a couple I know, a married couple, um, Muslims, and uh, I've known them for for some years now, and. Um, the they were telling me about a challenge that the husband was having on his job and um they actually met on that they used to work at that at that job together so they they met on the job so um she knows about like the stuff that goes on there and whatnot and basically um the husband has this supervisor who's essentially gunning for him you know he's just really treating him unfair so but the wife she knows the supervisor's wife, right? So she said, yeah, you know, um, you know, they've been really like threatening to fire him and, and she's, she, uh, you know, it's, I won't go through everything, but, you know, threatening to fire him and, and a couple other things where, you know, his job is in, is in jeopardy. And she ended up speaking to the owners. I mean, the, the supervisor's wife who she, she knew, you know, they just, um, ran into each other actually and they were speaking and the wife said some things that were um you know probably disrespectful towards the husband we'll we'll say that so she said you know I I went home 
that evening and I was praying and praying and praying and praying and, you know, um, you know, I saw this, this vision and I saw a vision of this woman uh, when I was praying <clears throat> and this woman was like very, very beautiful, but she was very angry, you know, but she was like this very, very attractive, very beautiful woman who was very angry. She said, you know, I had this vision and she said, but I'm praying and I'm saying like names out loud, you know, like this person is, is a problem. This person is a problem. This, you know so forth and so on. And she said, you know, when I got up that, that dawning, you know, I recognized that that conversation I had with the supervisor's wife, she's like, I need to doc, I, I need to document that because that, you know, it came to me that that's the actual turning point in this whole situation. What was said, not only was it, um, was it injurious, it was damaging, you know, um, but it also revealed the intentions of, of her husband, right? Oh, I might add that the wife of the supervisor also is affiliated with the company, right? So she wasn't just like e external talk. So when she said that to me, I said, um, she was like, you know, it was really beautiful. You know, when you, she was sharing like the value and the power of meditation and like, when you go into that space, when you're quiet and, and you listen, that visions will come and, and thoughts will come and, and, and things will come in order for you to, to protect and help your family. And I said, yeah, uh, you're definitely on some Jezebel time. And like, <laughs> you know, she was like, huh? Like her mouth sort of dropped. I was like, yeah, you, you, you full 100% Jezebel on right now. I said, that woman that you saw, that was Jezebel. That was Jezebel. And you don't need to feel sorry for her. That's Jezebel, you know? And what you're doing right now, you're circumventing the work of your husband. So now you're going to write a letter. I said, this is no different than Jezebel when, when the king Ahab wanted the vineyard, you know, the land with the vineyard on it. She was like, I got this, I'll take care of this. You see, you, you're writing a Jezebel letter. Now, now you want the vineyard. You're trying to control the outcome. And when she paused, she thought she was like, oh, my goodness, you're right. She's like, I didn't even I didn't even catch it. I saw it as me like protecting my family. And I said, yeah, so you want to protect the protector. Your husband's got this. It's his job. Like he, he got the job himself. You didn't get the job for him. He got the job for himself. He's been maintaining the job for himself. He's been providing for the family himself. And he is a man who is, is devout in his faith. So what has the creator told him? What did the creator tell him to do? And she said, you know, I didn't even ask. <laughs> I said, right, because your desire to control and your desire to usurp, you know, that, that superseded your desire to be obedient and to listen and to play your role. I said, that was Jezebel behavior, but it was masked under, I got to protect my family, you know, under this sort of mama bear, uh, uh, sort of, sort of energy, right? So that's an example of discernment, you know, where, um, she could have been like, nah, brother, you're off on that way. You don't know, but she knows me. Nah, yeah, y'all know me. <laughs> y'all know me, right? Because you know, if I'm speaking, you know where it's coming from. You see, I'm, I am a servant and a worshiper of the most high. I don't have to say it. You know, I am a servant and a worshiper of the most high because you see the way I behave. You see the things that I speak about. You see the fruit that I bear. You see the things that I do. And that's, that's how you discern who I am and where I'm coming from. So when I'm saying, oh, hold on, sister. No, that's all. That's straight Jezebel energy. It wasn't an immediate, like, wait a minute, hold on now. It was, uh-oh, okay. The man of Yah has spoken. Let me, let me listen to what he said. Let me think about what he said. Because I'm, because of discernment, you see? So in that moment, she had a visitation from Jezebel or the spirit of Jezebel and thought it was like, it was time to get her warrior on. <laughs> I said, no, you got visited by an angel who came to, to trick you. That's what happened. You got visited by 
you know, um, um, uh, Malachim, and they came to trick you, you see. And now you know, you know, you're playing the role like Jezebel, your husband has this, and you're trying to control the outcome like so many other Jezebel-spirited females in ancient scriptures have done to control the outcome, you see. And there is no value in that. Obviously, we know how Jezebel is, is dealt with in the folly um, that she engaged in and how we have to shun ourselves. You know, we have to shun that, excuse me, and sort of devote ourselves to a, a more prolific way of thinking and a pro more prolific way of being, you know. So a lot of times when we're seeking to sort of um, be diligent in our vision and not to be so sloppy, uh, it takes a lot of serious sort of introspection to look at, you know, what it is that we're supposed to be looking at. And sometimes, like I said, we can get tricked by people who are false diviners, you know, and there's so many false diviners um, nowadays where, like I said, everyone's either, I got a word, I got a word for you, you know, or um, they're coming with the, with the cards and with the crystals and with the rooms and, and um, that's okay if that's the level that you're at. But like you can't divine for me, right? I don't I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. And I've had people say that to me. I've had people reach out and even show me the image of of cards. Like you've done tarot card readings, chief, this came up for you. No, it didn't come up for me. That's not for me because that's that's not the level I'm at. Like you I've been teaching all these years so you could graduate out of that. But you've chosen not to graduate out of it because you'd rather deal with lower order energy and lower order spirits. I don't deal with lower order spirits. Low, a lower order spirit has nothing to say to me worth me listening to. Nothing. <laughs> you know, so it, 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 this, that's not how this thing works. It's not it's not like how we look at things from the humanistic perspective where we say like, well, you know, you can you can learn from everybody. In the spiritual realm, it's a little bit realm. It's a little bit different, you know. It's 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 much different, rather. I would say, you know. So yeah, you might be like, or someone asked me yesterday, what, 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 what sign are you? And I was like, here we go with this stupidness. So I gave him a sign. I just gave one. It's not even my sign. I just gave a sign, and she was like, mm hmm. I knew it. So I said, well, you know, but I'm not that sign anymore. And she was like, well, what do you mean? I was like, yeah, well, you're supposed to grow out of your signs, you know? She's like, yeah, because sometimes I got to be like this. And I got to be like that. I was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm done with the signs. I'm done with that. I've been done with that for like over 30 years now. Like I've been done with it for a long. I, I went through mine pretty quick. It's It's been over for a while now, you know, and I broke that down. But in that moment, she was like, oh, wow. Okay. I didn't look at it that way. Yeah, that's okay. It's interesting. Like she was learning something, you know? Um, but that's a level. So someone who's dealing with that could come in and be like, let me tell you something about you. No, you can't. No, that's not going to work. You can't, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> you see, these are processes of, of discernment. And a lot of times we take in so much. We take in so much that it creates so much extra internal chatter. That when it comes time to actually do something and time to actually listen, we don't know what to do because we have so many different things shouting at us, so much internal noise, so many different options. I can go here. I could go there. I could do this. I could do that. I could do that. What did the creator tell you to do? And sometimes when we when we do this sort of buffet style uh, spirituality, you know, I'm going to take a little bit of this take a little bit of that and we'll take a little bit of that and we do that ultimately too because we're we don't want to commit ourselves and devote ourselves to to anything because of our own arrogance and um it keeps us lost and confused for the rest of our lives i've never met anyone who's particularly spiritually intelligent who does that um most people i meet who are like that like well i try a little bit and i try a little that what i have noticed is that um they're not very bright they have a uh, you could tell they have low IQs, you know, because that's a that's a form of the reason you jump around so much because you don't understand anything and you're too arrogant just to say, I, I don't understand. And it's, there's nothing embarrassing about that. I went and got into initiated into systems where I didn't even speak the language. 
You know, and I have to just say, man, I don't understand anything you're saying to me. <laughs> you know, I need you to start me from the basics. You know, and I had um, people, who, okay, well, you're going to you gonna go fetch water. I could do that. <laughs> that I could do. I could carry junk. I could do that. You know, you're going to sit by the water here and weave these baskets. I could figure that out. I could do that. But the other stuff, I, my brain isn't isn't there yet. It will be, but I don't speak your language. And when when that's programmed, your language is programmed and the sounds of it and, and, and the grammatical structure, then I'll be able to flow with you. It's okay to admit, nah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not there right now. But a lot of times people... Um, because they have a spirit of pride in them, they don't want to admit that. So they hop from spot to spot to spot. So they really can't be tested on one. Oh, yeah, man, I studied some of that. I did some of that. I knew. I studied some of that. You know, I studied some of the... I was with the Muslims for a while. I was in a Christian church for a while. I do yoga. I did yoga for a while. I was with the Buddhists for a while. I was doing this. I was doing just meditation for a while. I was... So you have these systems where... Um, you have people like Confucius who didn't even attempt to do divination with the E King until he was in his nineties. Cause he didn't, he said, I wasn't ready until that point. But you, <laughs> in less than one year, you mastered the system and moved on to the next one. Yeah, I do, I do this and I do this, I do, I do that. You don't understand anything. And usually when you, you speak to a person like that, um, no, they can't do anything. I, I remember there was a guy I knew like that uh, in the martial arts world. And he was telling me about all these different systems he studied. And um, I was like, wow, man, I, I, um, I have studied multiple systems, but I haven't not nearly as many. Like I can count on even to this day, I can count. I'm almost trying to do it now. All right, maybe two hands. I will say one hand, but all right, two hands. On the amount of systems that I've studied, um, but one hand on the amount of systems that I could say, okay, I've been become extremely proficient in, right? But he was like just going and going and going and on here, yeah, and I studied under this one, and I studied. Oh, you need to check out. You never heard of this guy? I mean, I studied under him, and he was this guy, and this da 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 da. So I remember we um we were at a class once, and he was there. And I was like, yeah, brother, come up, man. Help me out, man. I'm, I was trying to show some, I was teaching some techniques. And I was like, yeah, you can, you can help me. So I was like, I told him to do something very simple. I don't remember if it was either a, a right cross or a left hook. It was one of them. He, he didn't know what a right cross was. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, even, even soccer moms <laughs> who go to learn like kickbox to the tie bow, they know what a right cross is. Like, didn't know right cross. Then I was trying to um, show like how to, you know, like how you stand, you know, when, when you're, this was like a Western, traditional Western boxing stance. Didn't know how to stand properly, you know? So I'm like, man, okay. <laughs> you know, you did a whole lot of kickboxing and Muay Thai and this and that, but you don't know how to throw a punch or how to stand properly. You know, um, and I, I, I semi suspected that, but I was like, nah, you know, because <laughs> someone who said he's been around the art for over 20 years and you met this person and took a picture and you went to this tournament, you met this grandmaster, that grandmaster. I don't have all those. Uh, uh, I don't have all those amazing stories. You know, I, I haven't met 15, 20 grandmasters. I've walked by them. I've been at tournaments and they all oh, that source over there. OK, and, you know, but I don't. I don't have any phone numbers and anything like that. Um, but I, I have a lot of real life um, experience in using these actual techniques. And, and I've always been appreciated for that when I've come into places to teach. And people have always been appreciative. Like, oh, no, this brother actually has used this in real combat situations. Use that and, and, and use that. But I I don't I don't have 25 30 systems under my belt. <laughs> you know, um I'm still trying to really learn uh two or three <laughs> like really try, you know, I'm I'm still trying to really learn how to throw a punch. You know, after so many years and I, I told someone that recently that I was joking. I said, "No, I'm still I'm still trying to master how to throw a punch." You know, um 
And as you get older, your, your body changes too. So, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a new mastery. The way I kick now is not the way I kicked, you know, 30 years ago. Um, I probably split my body in half if I tried to kick like that. So I got to learn the, the, the new kick, you know, and things like that. But very simple things, you know, still try. I'm still trying to learn how to breathe properly. Still trying to learn how to breathe properly. You know, I, I, I hold my breath a little bit too much. Not necessarily when I'm training, but just like now. Um, when I'm just speaking, you know, that's all a part of your art and your sciences, your posture, uh, how you hold your breath, what kind of shoes you wear, you know, um, your eating regimen, your supplement regimen, things like that. I'm still learning those things. Right. So we're still talking about discernment. So when you have people who are sort of like, well, I got the gift of discernment. I don't need any of that. Faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word of Yah. You know, um, hearing means to walk. To, not just to listen, but to actually live it out when you break, when you, when you retranslate the words, you know, so faith come by actually doing and, you know, faith come by hearing, hearing come by the word of God, by the word of God. Like I have to live this thing out. So these little magic tricks that people will tell you about, you no, know, that's people who are divining to artificial spirits. That's what that is. So they'll give you a little bit of truth. So you could speak to me, let's say about martial arts and say, well, you know, uh, uh, this one and that one, I don't want to mention a bunch of names, but, you know, um, or this style and, and that style. And you could do a couple little things with your fist and with your hands. Oh, look like, you know what he's doing? Because <laughs> artificial spirits can only give you a little something. <laughs> they can only give you a little something. <laughs> You know, so you'll be out here like like Dragonfly Jones, you, you, you know what I mean? But when it really comes down to it, your faithful servant, servant uh, you know, Kenji, is going to whip that that behind and, and get his, his light bill money out of, out of your inside breast pocket. Right. So um, discernment becomes very important to be able to see righteousness from from afar. You know, there was a time when even your, your house shot. I'll get into that in, in, in another time. When he when he saw that, and he said, "Yeah, I see. This is a man who has no guile. Here we have an Israelite with no guile in him, you know." And he said, "Well, how did you know that about me, you know? Because he said, you know, Yahweh Shai was over there preaching and talking and teaching. And sometimes people don't realize that when you are functioning with that quietness of spirit, you know, you see way more than what people realize you see. You know, uh, sometimes like even in our new, when I say things to people and they'll laugh." You know, or it'd be like a joke because you didn't know I knew. You know, you didn't know I was watching you this whole time. Because it's like, oh, chief is over there and he's maybe starting a fire or he's ministering to someone or helping someone or giving directions or giving someone a lift. You don't know, I'm looking at you over here. You don't even know. I saw you. <laughs> I'm watching you. You see, because inside is quiet. Inside is very calm. Inside is very quiet because I come from the realm of, of, of witchcraft. You know, to put it, put it very simply, um, the schools of training that I've gone through, whether it be the Vodun, whether it be the Palo Mayombe, whether it be the um, Santeria, whether it be um, um, the Isheshe. And that's not the only things I've studied. I just don't mention all of them. Um, or And when I say study, dived into you know, I still got cuts on my body to this day from rituals, intentional cuts, you know. Um, so I wasn't just a spectator <laughs> and sitting back. I was, you know, 10 toes deep and some things I'm still 10 toes deep, 10 toes deep in. But it would probably be hard for you to understand for some of you that the dude would be quoting the Quran and, and the Torah, and he's saying he's 10 toes deep in that, it's coming. That's why I said we're going to start getting into the anthropological studies so you can start to see how interconnected and related a lot of these truths are. You know, um, when you're learning them from, again, artificial spirits, there's an unhealthy division that's brought about. See, that's that's one of the issues that you see with fake fake discerners. All they do is cause drama and division and not that good, healthy spiritual division, but drama division. Uh, you'll find that they're always addicted to gossip. They love gossiping. 
gossip, uh, criticism, you know, uh, skepticism and division. That's like an immediate thing that you look at. If you see that, that person is not functioning from the spirit of the most high. They are not because the spirit of the most high doesn't function that way. Like I said, before I'm going to gossip about you, I'm going to see if I can rescue you. Before I criticize you, I'm going to see if I can rescue you. Before I'm skeptical, skeptical, spec, excuse me, I'm a spectacle skeptical <laughs> and sometimes disrespectable. <laughs> but before I'm, I'm not going to cut that out. <laughs> before I'm skeptical about something that you may be doing, I'm going to first say, well, how can I assist your efforts? It's always going to be something where I can look and see how can I rescue you? Because if, if I'm coming with the spirit of the Hamashiach, of the Messiah, and then that means my goal is to save my people, right? My goal, I didn't come to condemn my people. And even the Hamashiach said, I didn't come to condemn you, but to call you to repentance. What is repentance? To turn, like turn. <laughs> I'm repenting. I'm turning on my way of thinking. I'm changing my way of thinking. Sometimes that's how you rescue a person. I, I can, I, man, it's countless times. Um, my parents saved me through causing me to repent. Countless times. I can't even, it's too many incidents um, where my pops, it was usually, now did that make sense to you? Like, you know, it, it, of course it was like, you know, he was, it was being critical, but that's how fathers talk, you know, like, yo, come here. You might have did something, you know, he said, hey, man, did you cut the grass? Yeah, I cut the grass. You on your bike. You ready to be out. You know, and it's, hey, <laughs> oh, God, here we go. Here, what he want now? Huh? <laughs> your friends might be in front of the house waiting for you coming or not. Yo, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Come here, man. Come here. Let me show you something. <laughs> and, you know, you, you didn't do the yard properly or you left a big patch or this. Well, you just did whatever sloppy thing that young people do when they want to be done with something. And then you get that question. Does that look right to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And then they'll tell you a different way to do things. Man, go get the thing and da 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 da. Then they'll go tell your friends he ain't coming. <laughs> like y'all beat it, <laughs> you know. But that's repentance. That's being called to repentance, not condemnation. Condemnation. That look at you, you little dummy. You can't even cut the grass right. Get out of here. It's not that. No, you're gonna change the way you think. And when I became a man, I remember having those same uh, conversations with my youth. You know, like, hey, man, or hey, little sis, <laughs> do that again. <laughs> you didn't do that right. Look at that. You know, or uh, you wiped the counter. Why are the counters oily? I told you to clean the counter, the kitchen counters. Why, why are they oily? Where'd the oil come from? <laughs> oh, you, you was cleaning a, a pan or something. And you use the same thing to clean the pan to, to touch the counter? No, we don't do that. You know, now, side note, I've always taught my children, side note, important side note. If you can't put it on the counters, you can't put it in your mouth. If you can't put it on the dishes, you can't put it in your mouth. So that even goes for dish soap. If you, if, if I give you this dish soap and I squeeze it and put it in your mouth and you're like, oh, this is going to kill me, then it should not go on your dishes. Because ultimately it's going in your body, you know, and the same thing with the counter. You shouldn't have anything sitting on your counters that can't be eaten because that's where you prepare your food. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> you know, uh, so you, you say, oh, man, the counter's oily. Come in, fill this. Did you did you touch this after you were done? Right. That's a call to repentance. You see. So. um that's the difference. There's always going to be, you're going to know when someone's coming from the spirit of Yah, because they're also giving you things that are in alignment with Yah's word. See, that's the important thing about the sermon. Sometimes we get into a place where uh, we have to make a decision in life. And of course, a lot of times you want freaking Yoda. You want Yoda or Mufasa. No, not Mufasa. It was Rafiki. 
Yoda Rafiki to come out of the clouds and just tell me what to do. Tell me who I'm supposed to be. Tell me what I'm supposed to be. Tell me what my purpose is. So you don't have to be responsible for your own decisions. Of course, that's what we, yeah. But life doesn't work that way. You have to be responsible for your decision. So one of the first things, man, when it comes to discernment, you got to first ask yourself, it might be an open door. And sometimes you have opportunities in your life that are open door. But is it a good door? And an open door and a good door are not the same thing. Right? Um, I, oh, I'm not going to tell that story. Um, yeah, let me, let me skip that for the, for the babies. That was a family channel. Sometimes you get offered certain things. And um, you have to first ask yourself in the offering of such, man, is this what y'all would even want from me? Or you're trying to make it. I've had this happen so many times, man. And I've had people get upset with me about this. You're trying to make a decision about something, but the decision makes no sense. Let's say, for instance, if I'm sitting here trying to decide what to do next with my life. And I say, man, OK, well, I could go full time. And into ministry, go just go hard body with that. Uh, I could go back into my music 100% hard body. Um, I'm also an organizational psychologist. A lot of you don't know that about me. Um, I could go hard into the into the IO psychology and, and start doing more, more and more executive coaching or more and more management consulting or whatever, right? There's so many different things that I do on that side. Or... I could join the NBA. I'm just trying to figure out which one I, I like. I got so many things in front of you, in front of me. Some of that don't make any sense. Some of that doesn't make any sense. Right. So we'll be like, uh, I'm trying to figure out which way to go. Well, is that door even open? Right. So let's start with the one that we know. We know the obvious one. Right. We're doing multiple choice. I could join the NBA. Let's let's start with a couple of things here. You might be a little too old, brother. Brother. So join the NBA as what? <laughs> um, I could uh, look into sports psychology. You know, I could look into therapeutic services with the NBA. I could even um, work in the statistical and, and, and data analysis division because that's what I do. I do statistics and analysis and research and and human sciences, but maybe not to play because a couple of reasons. One, I'm really not tall enough. Um, I'm tall, but I'm not, a, I'm not, you know, NBA tall, right? I'm not uh six, five or six, four and up. Well, I'll say six, five and up really. That's NBA tall. Um, I'm a little too old. Here's a very important one. Uh, I suck at basketball. Always have. Suck. Like I I don't I don't have any of the um the African American basketball genetics, the gene that apparently every other uh young black male had in my neighborhood. <laughs> somehow I even my brothers had it. And somehow I didn't get it. <laughs> you know. Um so no, so there's there's a hundred and million one reasons why it, me playing in the NBA makes no sense, right? That just would not happen, and I wouldn't want to play in the NBA. That's, there's another that's that's another one. Got that? That's not. I don't even watch basketball. I have no interest in it, right? Um, so sometimes we, because we have so much loud mental chatter, we're making things a choice and a decision that are not even on the table. You know. Uh, I remember some years ago speaking to a sister and I knew and we were talking about courting and mating and things like that and having family and these things that we advocate within I knew. And, you know, I was kind of like asking her, like, are there brothers that maybe you're, you're interested in I knew that you would like to court? And I think she had courted one or two already. Um, and she said, well, you know, I was really thinking about that. And she was like, and I thought about if I was courting you. Like that would, you know, I could court you, but that would be like a lot of pressure on me if I was court. And I'm listening because I didn't want to shut the conversation down, but I'm like, who said that was an option? It's not, <laughs> you know, but I never put any courtship papers in on you. I never even 
gave an inkling that I would be interested in courting you? Like, where, where in your mind did you think that that was on your, <laughs> like, your, your scale and your pros and cons that you would court me, you know? Um, sometimes, again, like, we put things in front of us that are not even an option. They're not even an opportunity that's there, right? Um, so that's one of the ways that we cloud our heads in, when it comes to discernment. Uh, and then sometimes when we, when we do get an opportunity to narrow things down and we have to make certain decisions, we don't align the decision first with what does the creator want. Because 90% of the time, the choice is already, it's already been taught to you. 90% of the time, it's already been taught to you. You know, I've seen that on like Amazon book reviews before where people have complained and said, I read this book, but most of this stuff you can just find on Google. But you didn't. <laughs> Someone went through the work of finding it for you and compiling it and putting it in a book. I've seen people say that too about like different um, conscious community speakers like, oh, that's all like stuff you could just find yourself. Well, go find it then. <laughs> you know, so it's the same thing. A lot of times when people have come to me for consultation, I have turned people away five minutes into the con consultation because of the type of questions they're asking. And I'll say things like, hey, did you read it? Did you read any of my works? Did you read Noir Mail? Did you read Solutions for Dysfunctional Family Relationships? That book is, is what, 12 years old now. These are old, old works. You know, did you read it? Nah, I ain't, I ain't read. You know what? Let's do this. I'm going to refund you. Let's end this consultation and I'm going to hook you up. Go buy the books. The book, the ebook versions are like five bucks, four or five bucks. Go buy the books. The, the things that you're asking me, I've already answered already in the text. So you didn't even have to, you didn't have to spend this money. You could go spend it on something else. Right? So, um, it's the same thing when we're speaking about before we go to the creator and say, well, creator, what do you want me to do? What did the creator already tell you to do? What has already been laid out before? What instructions? Have you looked into those things? If you haven't, then of course your discernment is going to be horrible because you don't really think like the creator. You're not using this body of literature and all the comparative bodies of lit literature to understand, oh, this is how my Baba in the next dimension thinks. This is how the person who programmed me on a genetic level, this is how they think. So therefore, this is what they would want for me. You see, this is what, you know, in, in, in my culture, uh, heterosexuality is the norm, right? So if I, if I have an option where, you know, let's say, uh, uh, another guy says, Hey, man, I, I want to marry you. I want to be a part of your family and another, uh, Male, I don't want to say guy, because you know, but a, a male says I want to be a part of your family, and then a female says I want to be a part of your family. I don't have to go to my creator and or or like ask. I need more discernment to figure out what to do. I've already been told, like, well, in your culture, it would it would be the female, so the guy is not even the option, right? So I don't I don't need to do a reading on that. I don't need it, because we already know what what my culture dictates and what my spirituality dictates that I've committed myself to, it's going to always be, the female is always going to be my, the adult female is always going to be my compliment first. And then we start, we can start, you know, asking questions from there, but he's, he would be immediately disqualified, right? So um, how much discernment do I need there? But if I have a lot of noise in my ear, and if I have a lot of influences and I'm intaking a lot of foul, not going to say foulness, but intaking a lot of secular thought, I might be like, hmm, well, you know, I've tried everything. <laughs> I've tried everything so far and it's been, it's been okay, but it could be better because, you know, it could always be better. The flesh is never satisfied. I wonder, right? Because the noise and my creator might be like, are you out of your monkey mind? What? You know, but I don't hear it because of the internal noise, you see. Um, so I'm going to get into uh, in coming sessions, like really how to sharpen that a little bit more, how to remove some of that noise and really why the discernment, you know, um, why it's so fundamental to really creating the world that we were placed here to to create and to establish. But, you know, um, that sense of sort of, like I said, 
um, false discernment is important. You know, I think it was Einstein who said he would rather listen to a woman's intuition than a man's logic. You know, um, me and I, me and Einstein, we ain't a part of the same culture. All right. So, um, but a lot of people will believe something like that. But nowadays that intuition is shot. You know, like I said, man, you know, like it's so important for a mother to have that discernment because you could save your children's lives that way. Sometimes your children are being attacked and oppressed by stuff you have no idea about. You know, uh, your, your little baby, your daughter may come home one day, man, and, you know, um, she's just not in a, in a talking mood. And you think she's just having a, a, a quiet day. And you don't realize because right now she's under attack. You don't even know it. She's under attack. You know, you might, I, I remember a situation happened some years ago, um, with one of my seeds and, um, you know, she was really, um, she was really in a space where I'm just going to word this properly. She was really in a space where she was, um, like I could see the guilt. There was a shadow over her because what happens is that when you have a spirit on you, whether it's, it's. There's either going to be a light on you or a shadow on you. It's the best way I could describe it. And if you have eyes to see, you can see it immediately when a person walks in a room. Is this person shadowed or is this person, are they lit up by something? And I'm looking and I'm like, no, nah, my baby got a shadow on her. Like something, something's up, something's up, right? So long story short, uh, uh, what happened, and I, and I could see like, no, there's like a spirit. It's like, she looks guilty. There's something, there's something messing with us. So, you know, I'm, I'm kicking. I'm like, what's up, baby? Like, you know, whoop de whoop de whoop. Um, and she's like, you know, just sound my barber. Like, you know, no, no, whatever, whatever. Right. So uh, I'm trying to remember how this kind of came out. Uh, it was my, my sister in love. I don't like to say sister in law. It was my sister in love. She she called me and she was like, um, bro, I got to apologize to you about something. She's like, before I even tell you what it is, she was like, don't flip out. I was like, all right, what's up? What's up? And long story short, my nephew, they were, they were working on something on a laptop together. At the time, um, my brother, his, his like printer was in the basement. So they had to take the laptop out of the, out of the uh, kitchen and down to the basement. So my nephew, I shouldn't laugh because it's not funny, but my ne when they get downstairs, my nephew decides like, we got a laptop, ain't nobody looking. Let's look up some naked pictures, <laughs> you know? Um, so he's looking up pictures and stuff, but my baby was there, right? So when she gets home, she feels guilty, right? So, she, so... You know, my sister in love told me like, yeah, I went through, I had to go on the computer. I looked into the, the browser history and boom, you know, it was right there. I was like, ah, that's what it was. So she was being attacked in that moment. So instead of me, like, I didn't flip out on either one of them because you're both under attack, right? You're both under attack. Yeah, he might have been like, hey, let's, you know, what? but that's still an attack. See, a lot of times people don't realize, man, and some of you may have had this experience in your first, like, encounter with whatever, pornography, violence, whatever. Um, you ever have those experiences where you, um, you find stuff that's hidden in the house? You find your uncle's. You know, back in the days when I was younger, it was like nudie mags. I don't even know they even had those anymore. But now you could just go online. But back then it was like you would find a magazine or some or some like um, VHS tapes or some DVD tapes. And like, I mean, DVD, you know, DVDs you could put in and you could watch porno or whatever. But they were like carefully and well hidden. How the heck did you find them in a room that you had no business being in? You see, I'm going to tell you how. Because just like when there's blessings in the world, those blessings will call to you. I can't tell you how many times I've walked through the park and found money. More times than I can, I can count. You know, 20. In fact, it happened. 
couple months ago. I was walking to the park. I found like $140. Um, I saw one bill. I saw another one. And, saw another, and I'm looking around. And I left them on the ground. I, I put them all together. Put them on the ground. And I you know, put them like the corner of my foot. So you can still see them. So I'm standing there. And I stood there probably for about 10 minutes. I'm like, all right. Somebody got to come back for the money. But I can't. I'm not going to leave it here. You know. And I'm looking around, and I said, but I'm going to leave it here. So if somebody walks by and they see me step on it, they're going to know, like, oh, he must have found that that money or something. And this was, like, late. The park was, like, empty anyway. I'm like, well, I do like the number 14, 140, 14 keys. So you know what? <laughs> this must be the most high, you know. So, uh, yeah. Right? Um. But it like I found it and I took it. I was I was walking. I normally even walk that way. And something was like, man, go that way. And then cut through the park. Don't like don't go around the park. Cut through the park. OK. And walk on this side because like the way the park is, you come in and it splits this way. But where I so it splits this way where I had to go was over there. But something said go this way and then walk all the way around. I'm like, all right. And this way, there's like not really too many lights. So this is like, you feel like getting mugged? Go that way, you know. But so I'm walking that way. Found the money, right? So do you know that demons call you the same exact way? So you could be just chilling in the house as a child. You downstairs watching TV or doing whatever. Something tells you go in your parents' room. You go in your parents' room. Something tells you, lift up the mattress and look in between the mattress and the box spring. And then you see something that you ain't supposed to see. Right? Because it called you. It called to you. You see? So when that situation happened with my my nephew and my daughter, I didn't, you know, oh, I'm going to beat his tail. You know? No. I didn't do it. I didn't. My mind didn't even go there. It was like, oh, my goodness, man. Something's attacking my, my nephew and my baby. Like, I got to rescue them from this because I know what happens next. You see? And and the reality is once you introduce a demon like that, it's not long before, even though these are blood relatives. Where the demon says. Y'all could try this on each other. Then you will really be wanting to hurt somebody. And not realizing, though, it was your fault because you didn't rescue them when you should have rescued them. Instead of rescuing them, you sought to condemn them. You see? You sought to condemn them. So when that happened, I went into rescue mode. And, you know, we talked. We affirmed together. We meditated together. And as soon as I brought up, my, my daughter, she started crying. And I was like, oh. And then I felt bad. <laughs> you know. And she was like, are you disappointed? And I was like, no, sweetheart. I'm not disappointed. No, not at all. Not at all. You know. Um, <clears throat> you know, my nephew started scratching his leg. <laughs> he, thought, he thought he was He started. <laughs> he thought I was going to tear him up. I said, no. Nah, you know, I got to rescue you from this thing that's trying to get you. You see, so discernment is important. Now, I'm speaking about it from a, a masculine pr- perspective, but I'm not around the babies all the time like that. I'll be out. But you sisters are. So you have to have that quality. You have to have that skill. You have to sharpen it because it could be stuff like that where your child is being attacked by something. Something's trying to rule over your child and you don't catch it. And maybe by the time you catch it, you're just angry or you're just embarrassed or whatever. So you react instead of respond with this with a spiritual and a loving solution based on your discernment. You see, maybe you're embarrassed because you didn't discern what was going on. You didn't catch it. You know, so now you want to overreact to try to put on a show. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, um, like I said, there's a mastery of the laws that we have to sort of begin to to get so we can truly be discerning. No one can be discerning without knowing the word or the logos or, you know, the, the, the truth, the way and the life of the most high. 
Your discernment won't work without that. You could do all that. I had a feeling and you could do all that you want. It doesn't work. It does not work. And when you have people who are claiming to have it without that, it's coming from artificial spirits. I promise you, it's coming from artificial spirits. You know, and I'm not one of the people that says, well, if it ain't coming from here, it's coming from the devil. Because I know what the devil is. I'm not silly. I know what the devil is. I know what the serpent is. I know what the dragon is. I know what Satan is. I know what Lucifer is. I know what Gadriel is. I know what Baal is. I know what Molech is. I know what the, the son of the morning is. We got nine already. You see, I could have kept going, by the way. <laughs> but we got, we, got, we got nine already. You see? And that's just out of one book. I didn't even get over to the Iblis and the Jinn and, you know, so... This is not, you know, this is not sort of that simple, simplistic sort of thing where, you know, if it ain't a God, yes, you can look into a flame and, and the truth that come out. Yes, you can look into a crystal and it's true or into a, into a river or scry into the sun. Absolutely. But what portal are you seeking to open by doing that? Into whose realm? So that's a, that's that takes us to another space. But that takes us to the space we'll be speaking about in, in coming segments. All right. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. And I want to give a, a, a show of love or an expression of, of love and appreciation to all of you who have partnered with our new life global ministries, you know, um, and have like given donations and dues. Some do monthly contributions, they, you know, because we have it. So you, you could be recurring, even if it's just a dollar or two dollars. We got some people who give like. $4 a month or $10 a month or $1 a month, you know, and I want to thank you. You know, um, there's some stuff that we're working on now that I'm um, compiling that, you know, you're, that's been helping for what we're doing in terms of like survival work and stuff like that and, and helping other folks and in, in doing things. And, um, you know, usually towards the end of the year, I, I put a challenge forth. There's going to be another challenge. Last time we did the push-ups and squats and um, writing letters and, and things like that challenge. And uh, we're going to do another one soon. So be prepared and ready for that. I'll probably, uh, maybe I'll, I'll share it to give you a little time to prepare. I'll share it in in the next segment. But I just wanted to give a thanks, man, to those of you who have partnered and who have seen like value in what it is that we share here and what we do and, and what we're striving to do for the community uh, of young and old, you know, and really trying to get people into a place where they're not only empowered and in the highest thought, but they're reclaiming and restoring what has been stolen and, and robbed and they've been tricked out of by a wicked and sick uh, system. You know, as you all know, what we're battling here is spirit. Straight up, we're battling spirit, man. And sometimes it's a spirit of ignorance. Sometimes there's a, there's a spirit of oppression. There's a spirit of rejection. You know, um, and all of these different things that would then contribute to a lot of the issues that we, we have in life. So those of you who have been helping us to to war against that and to overcome that, you know, as a collective and who want to be a part of that collective. I just want to show an expression of, of, of gratitude because you don't have to. Um, you don't have to. <laughs> you could take that that five dollars or ten dollars or twenty dollars a month, or for some it's even more, and you can. I don't know. I don't. You know, I devote so much of my my energy and my time and my resources into I knew. To be honest with you, I I don't even know what stuff costs anymore. <laughs> like, cause I don't do like regular. Uh, I guess we would say regular stuff. So I don't even know. I was going to say, well, you could take that and spend it on. I don't know what people really spend their money on, honestly. I guess subscriptions, maybe, or something. I don't know. Um, whatever I do goes right back into into the work. Um, so, yeah, it's a little different. But like I said, I'm appreciative because it could go into another... Uh, Netflix or something or uh, into some uh, I don't know man I am keep trying to come up with as I'm talking into more Uber rides oh Uber Eats and DoorDash it could go into more takeout food there we go that's one I know about it could go into more takeout foods or I think DoorDash and Uber Eats is a thing right 
Um, or whatever the heck, man. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, but thank you. You know, thank you for um, seeing the value in, in what it is that we're doing here and we're, we're doing more of and we're continuing to do. And um, for being present and for being supportive. And for the comments, I read all the comments in the last video. I didn't, I don't think I responded to them yet. I will respond to all of them. Um, but the feedback has been great. Thank you for sharing like your thoughts and your, and your ideas and like the parts that hit you. I'm very interested also on this one, um, not just from the women, but definitely the women, but the the men and the women, you know, interesting enough with what I knew in with my work, uh, I have actually more male subscribers than female subscribers, you know, um, which is very rare <laughs> because most, most sort of spiritual ministries and stuff like that, they have more female, but, uh, yeah, I'm going I'm to be kind. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> but I, I know what that's really about. So the fact that I have men who discern enough to say, nah, this, you know, that means a lot to me. Because I know what that really means, you know. Yeah, man. But um, I'm very interested in what the sisters have to say about the sermon. Because I think it's a very important quality for motherhood, you know. And probably sisterhood to a degree, too. Because... I know I've had some beautiful sisters in my life who just just knew what I needed when I needed it. And it's been very few. I will say that. And I'm saying platonically. I don't really I don't really have too many female platonic. I have like two, maybe one. <laughs> but um if because it, it it goes very quickly into look, if you're going to be around me, like that, then we need to be like brother, sister. Like you, I, you will, will be introduced as my sister from here for you know. Like I'm, I don't really do the this is my homegirl thing too much. Like so, I don't really have too much of that. Um, but but the thing, and I barely even have you gonna be my sister. Like you know, so the ones who make it to that space just know that they're very special. But uh, yeah, there's very few been able to like see like. Mm. You need a bowl of lentils, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, you know, or, or whatever. It could be something as simple as a, as a, you know, sitting next to me and telling a joke or, you know, or, or whatever. Um, but that's discernment because it's something that they see in a, and it's always been very interesting later when they've said, yeah, I noticed this, or I saw this was happening, you know, that was happening. And, um, they were wise enough not to make noise about it. It's always the silly females who want to sh tell you everything that they see because they they think they're they think they're being profound and they're letting you know like yeah I'm all woman but they're usually off. You know I notice this about you. The ones who talk like that they never notice anything. I've had people say that even on YouTube videos. Chief, I saw your last video and you looked this way in a bit. Okay. <laughs> okay all right okay now now you're a prophet you know that's happened a lot you know or people have told me i look angry or uh i get a lot of different ones oh yeah i could tell that you tired of teaching on youtube and stuff like well i've said it like that's you're not you're not telling anything um that's it's not profound i do what i'm supposed to do you know but uh yeah, that's always like that fake discernment. You got to be like really careful with. And, um, you know, I know everyone has a different personality. I'm the personality that will be like, get, man, get away from me with that. I'm just saying, shut up. But if that's not your personality, don't be telling people to shut up. All right. <laughs> you know, uh, I think people know me, though. So they know like, yeah, I will tell you, shut up, get up out my face. Get, get the F away from me with that. You know, I saw your last video and you look real happy in that. But shut up. You don't know what the hell. I'm not even a happy person. Me. <laughs> like, you looked real happy. Or I saw that last video and you was really at peace in that. But mother effort, you don't know my life. You was at peace. That's because I had a white shirt on. <laughs> let me let me go and change and put a red shirt on. I saw that last video. You looked real angry. I had a red shirt on. 
you got the white shirt on, you really looked at peace with the white shirt, or I crack a couple of jokes, or I laugh. It's like you was really enjoying yourself. Do you know what what I do for enjoyment? This is a family channel, so I can't even say. But do you really want to know what I do for enjoyment? And I'm, I can promise you it got nothing to do with teaching somebody something about spirituality on YouTube. Y'all heard the <laughs> Y'all heard some of my music. <laughs> so, yeah, man. But anyway, well, I just want to send a show of, of thanks and appreciation uh, for those of you who have partnered with the ministry and, and you know, and getting uh, getting stuff done, man. You know, we're getting it done. And, and I am um, also pleased with those who have been helping as well within the ministry, whether it be been with events or, or retreats and stuff like that. Um, you know, just really coming through and being loving towards each other. And you know what? Let me tell you something, man. And this is a real important thing. And I'm going to say this in closing. You know, um, you only got to touch one person. You only have to touch one person. You know, look at it like this. And, you know, you could even think about like YouTube talk, if you will. Um, there was a time when, you know, it was all about how many subscribers you have. Man, I got a channel. You know, I got 70,000 subscribers. I got 100,000 subscribers. I got 200,000 subscribers. Okay, cool. Great. Then it was like how much engagement you have. You could have 100,000 subscribers, but you put up a five-minute video. People only watch 30 seconds of it. Oh, man, that's no good. My engagement rate's really low, right? All of that's like that's a that's that's web 2.0 it's 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 a thing it's dying the reality is but like I've talked to many uh, artists like musical artists and stuff like that and I think this is applies to many to many other places as well and I've told them this very simple thing I said man there was a time I was making a lot of money when I owned my label selling CDs right CDs that I would go to disc maker thismaker.com, have them pressed up, do the artwork ourselves, everything. We sell the CDs at shows, et cetera, that, and that, right? Now, what I'm saying is that as an artist, right, you could be a starving starving artist and be like, man, I need 300,000 subscribers. I need, I need a million IG subscribers, this and that and that, right? Or you could have, you could have a thousand subscribers. And if you have a, a, a thousand subscribers, so a thousand true and honest supporters, that will give you $100 a year based on whatever it is you're selling or mark advertising revenue, merchandise, whatever. You, that's $100,000. Most artists don't make that much. I know it doesn't sound like a big number, but you'd be surprised how little artists actually make. Right? You know, so it's not about the huge numbers. It's about the quality of connection that you create with people. And I've often said that. You know, uh, a lot of the videos I do, they don't get a, some of well, the Arisha videos. They do get like a lot of views. But um, when I'm talking about character <laughs> and being a better person, you know, they don't get as many views. But I, but even if I do a video and it gets 600 views, I can promise you out of those 600 people, 400 of them, 400 of those people reach out to me. You see, so um, when you are supporting a ministry or supporting a movement like Anu, you know, it's not always about like this big thing that you may do or this big show of support or, well, does Anu got 5,000 people? No. Nope. You know, um, it's about the quality of connection. I've often said, I don't care if it comes down to three people in Anu. The quality of connection is going to be there. And that's what's, what's most powerful. You see, the quality of the connection. So I want to thank those. Like This is, again, another expression of, of gratitude for those of, of you who have connected, who have supported, who have offered things, or who have, you know, even like we do doing retreats and the, the sisters who make the food and, you know, or, or the brothers who, who will light the fire before I even get there. There was a time when I was doing all of this stuff myself, you know, um, but, you know, people coming in and saying, well, I could do that. I could I can light the fire or I could pick someone up from the airport or I can, you know, go on a food run for somebody or something like that, man. Quality of connection, man, is so beautiful. 
And this is what nation building is. And I'm loving it. This is what nation building is, man. So, yeah, everyone, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm out. Chief Yuya, I will see you in another seven days. Uh, if you would like more information about the ministry, Anu Life Global Ministries, uh, at anulifeglobal.org. Everything is in the description of this video, so you can see it right there. Uh, if you want to donate, if you want to join, if you want to see what what's happening next or what's going down. And uh, I always encourage you to subscribe so you'll kind of know what's happening. All right? Shalom.